DApp stands for Decentralized Application. Their code runs on a distributed computing network and not on a central server owned by a single company. Let's compare the structure of a traditional app with the average DApp that runs on a smart contract platform. With a traditional app you have a database where you store the data. You have an API where your frontend can talk to the database and insert or retrieve data. A lot of APIs are also publicly available for other applications. And you have a frontend, the user interface where the user can interact with your application. Now let's look at the decentralized app. You can store important data on the blockchain or just hashes of it to make it cheaper. You can store your other data in a decentralized way on platforms like IPFS for example. The next layer would be your smart contracts, which run on and can interact with the blockchain. And the dApp also has a frontend. Web3.js is a popular JavaScript framework to easily interact with your smart contracts on Ethereum for example. Let's have a look at some attributes of dApps. dApps are transparent, because the backend code of dApps, smart contracts, are executed on a public blockchain that everyone can see. The data of dApps is immutable, meaning the data or hashes of the data are saved on the blockchain so no one can change it. But dApps are also slow and expensive, because the code is executed on all the nodes in the network and you have to pay for this decentralized execution. So the big question is, why should you build a dApp? And when might one be useful? dApps are generally useful in application areas where trust plays an important role in the interaction between parties and where this trust was traditionally facilitated by central authorities. dApps can remove the intermediary and build secure, fast, cheap and transparent alternatives to centralized systems. Let's have a look at some real-world use cases. The most prominent use case for dApps is transferable virtual property. We have talked about Bitcoin, the most famous example of this category. But there are also other cryptocurrencies with different features. For example Zcash with a bigger focus on privacy. Digital collectibles are also gaining a lot of traction right now, through the rise of CryptoKitties. Another big segment is decentralized markets. Filecoin is a decentralized market for storage and Augur for predictions because there is no intermediary and make them a cheap and open alternative to centralized marketplaces. More people are realizing how much power data has and are concerned about who owns their data and what happens with it. Blockchain projects are building solutions that aim to keep the control of this data in the user's hand. Uport is building an open identity system, while Patientory provides a way to store patient data in a secure, decentralized way. Transparency is another big feature of dApps. Because the blockchain is public, everybody can retrace transactions while ensuring that the data remains untampered with. Agora is building a blockchain-based digital voting solution and Alice tackles the transparency problems found within charities. We are still in the very early days of decentralized applications so it's hard to say what the Google or Amazon of the apps will be. Some people speculate that we will finally decentralize everything and this will become the default model to build future companies. Through digital asset sales you have for instance a method to crowdfund your project and you can share digital ownership with governance in a transparent way. The rapid growth of interest in blockchain technology may also be a result of the hope that this new technology will help us overcome the challenges of power centralization and inequality that our society currently faces. Perhaps by developing decentralized organization systems, we will be able to drastically improve human cooperation and build a better future.